All right, we're continuing. I believe it's day 16. We'll see when I upload. Um, with Rav Tzvi Yehuda Kuk. Zechali Vacha. He says like that. Get yourself forth to the land. Rav Tzvi Yehuda explained that the special relationship between the Jewish people and Israel was made clear with Hashem's first revelation to Avram. Hashem says to Avram, Lech Lecha, get yourself forth. Avram Avinu, go for yourself. Avram Avinu was commanded to journey to a specific place. The land that I will show you is the first thing Hashem asked him. That's the first part of his that Hashem. That's like rooted. It's part of your Judaism. You, 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 you want to convert? You want, you want to connect to me? Go to my land. Usually, it's like the foundation. Usually, a person knows his destination when he begins a journey. But Avram wasn't told where to go. He was to discover this only during the trip. Okay, that's very important for our lives. We go, we're not sure what our mission is. What's my mission in life, right? And, and we need to know that you're supposed to find it out on the way. As you go through everything you went through, analyze everything you go through, and then you're going to find out what's the destination. So don't, we should not be too worried sometimes about, uh, you know, why I, I can go anywhere. I don't know my mission yet. No, you're going to figure it out on the way. But Abraham wasn't told where to go. He was to discover this only during the trip. In this, we can see the greatness of Abraham, the greatest man among the giants. Even, it says in Sofrim, Joshua, even without knowing where he was going, Abraham picked up his family and went, went to find the place where he was to serve Hashem. And we are worried about moving to Israel. Oh, what's going to happen? Where am I going to live? What job? Figure it out on a trip. Life is a journey. Life is a trip. Life is an adventure. So go to the land and figure it out. Do you think Avram, you know, I mean, he had at the time a lot of money and stuff, but, um, but still he had no idea what, what to expect, what to do. Um, so we, we, we take a little bit of money and we go to Israel. Don't, but don't wait to be rich. You'll figure out on the way. There's, we're not meant all to be rich anyway. There's an expression in Latin, ex orient lux, the light comes from the east. So too spiritual lights come to the world from the east, from our Middle East. From this spot on earth, Hashem er educates mankind. To do this, Hashem wants us here in Israel. We don't belong in other places. Haven't we already sufficiently tasted in life in Europe and Auschwitz? We have to understand. Century after century, we almost never stay longer than a hundred years. Then Hashem say, enough, you elevated the sparks, like the Baal Shem Tov says. We're in different places. The Arizal says, we go in different country to elevate sparks. That's it. You take the sparks, you take the, the, the beauty of the culture, you... Uh, not in a selfish way. You 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 learn from them. You appreciate them. You you shine upon them. You inspire them, and then you live. You know, Americans are meant to be Americans. They're not meant to be American Jews. Spanish are meant to be Spanish. They're not meant to be Spanish Jews. So you go in the different places where you had to be because of exile, and then that's it. You you did what you need to do. Um, if there's no real reason, how do you know? Will you check, ask your rabbi, and what, why you should, why you're still here, and then you check, um, what am I doing here? And then check in halacha if you're the right to be here, if you finish your mission. If you're still stuck, then you still you're still stuck. That you still have something to elevate. But most people nowadays are not stuck anymore. They don't have a real reason to stay. It's just comfortable. And that's not good. That's why we stayed in the desert, and we have, and we have. That's why we have the uh, Well, we make ourselves uncomfortable. Oh, you, you're comfortable in Galus. I'm gonna make you uncomfortable. Tisha five affliction, right? We have to go outside of our comfortable zone. Otherwise, like, I mean, you don't get it. It's not about being comfortable. Only after midday you realize, oh, okay, I can be comfortable or not again because I'm connected to the land of Israel and I'm planning to go there. That's the only comfort you can have. So, 
I have to understand my only true joy, my only true desire is to go to Israel and to live there. That's my only tr real joy, real comfortable. The midst of settling the land, when Rav Tzvi Yehuda paused, you could hear the pencil still working. Ben Akiva was a worldwide Zionist youth movement which strove to foster a connection and identification with Israel among diaspora youth. By the way, I want, I want, I want to say, like, we think, like, Zionist, right? Every Jew should be a Zionist, meaning Zionist in the sense that every Jew should want to be in Israel. There's secular Zionists, religious Zionists, religious Zionists, everybody should be religious Zionist. You should be religious and you should want to live in Israel. The, 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 the negative part of Zionists is to just make a, a secular state. We don't want, of course, a secular state. But, but in the meantime, you still have to move there, settle there, make Israel stronger, make the land stronger, make the soul, the unity of the Jewish people stronger. That's what it's about. So, so, it's like that. It is sometimes erroneous, erroneously thought that living in Israel, conquering her, selling the land, and keeping her under Jewish sovereignty are only the means for observing a Torah lifestyle in Israel. This is a mistake. The precept of conquering and settling the land is, in itself, a mitzvah dis prescribed by the Torah, to settle the land so that it will not lay in desolation. That's the... The, Sefer, the Ramban in Sefer Mitzvah said, Behold, we are commanded with the conquest of the land in every generation. In every generation, we are meant to conquer the land. So, this disagrees with other opinions. Let's say you can take the Israel by force, all that, but the Ramban disagrees. In Judaism, it is accepted that among the Rishonim, second in importance to the Rambam is his near contemporary, the Ramban. One of the most outstanding sages and Kabbalists, two things, two things which go hand in hand. The Ramban concludes that the commandment to settle the land of Israel is a positive mitzvah of the 613 mitzvahs in the Torah. He bases his decision on the language of the verse, and you shall dispossess the, the inhabitants of the land and dwell in it. So meaning it's it's uh, so the the Ramban say in my opinion this is a positive commandment and joining that they dwell in the land and possess it because it was given to them and that they should not despise the inheritance of God God gave you a gift you're not going to fight to keep that gift here are here we are commanded in this mitzvah for this is verse is a positive commandment so um, we are enjoining and joined with two tasks first to possess the land through conquest, and secondly, to dwell in the land. The Ramban clearly establishes that this land with Hashem promises our forefathers must be kept under our control and not under the control of any other nation. This is clearly meant in a national sense, for everyone to understand that ruling a land means the establishment of a state in that land. The establishment of Jewish sovereignty over the land of Israel is a fundamental precept of the Torah. To ensure that the land does not remain desolate, we must actively promote the development and settlement in the land in every sphere possible. So agriculture, political, all that. Obviously, we want a Jewish religious state. And we're getting there. We have three... Yehuda wanted diaspora students to know that there was absolutely no question of a Jew's duty to live in Eretz Israel. The conquering of Israel and the settlement of the land was a commandment of the Torah. This was clearly explained by the Ramban and all of the Rishonim and Achronim who decided Halakha agreed. This obligation to live in Israel rests both on the individual and on the nation as a whole. While there were Orthodox communities who opposed the modern Jewish state, Rav Tzvi Yehuda told us the opposite. Medinat Israel was kadosh in its fulfillment of this national mitzvah. It is the vehicle Hashem is using to enable us to actualize this commandment, which is equal in value to all the precepts of the Torah. This meaning that the way God wanted to possess land is first through a secular state and then make it religious. That's not, you know, 
that was not the ideal. Obviously, we, we I didn't want to have a religious state, but obviously it happened in a way that started with secular. First, you're born, then you become religious. First, you have a body, then you have a soul. First, you have darkness, then you have light. And this is the secret. This is what the people who don't want to accept Israel or use Israel um, misunderstand. It's, it's deeper. You have to understand Kabbalah. I think if you're a Kabbalist, it's impossible not to understand this concept. Um, not that you're a Kabbalist, but if you, you learn some Kabbalah, you understand that this is the way the Jewish people have always worked. Um, and how anything spiritual is, it is brought through the physical. You have, you have to have a body, you have to have do your physical needs. But little by little, you infuse your physical needs with spirituality. And that's what the land of Israel is. God willing, soon the whole entire, most of the army, Jewish army, will be religious Jews, and um, not that it should, it should be only religious. But this is what's happening. The world, the Jewish world, is transforming itself in more and more. Uh, the Israeli world into a religious Jewish um, Israel, and Bezat Hashem soon. Everything, everything will be kosher again because there'll be so many religious Jews. This is going to be the natural consequences. But nobody saw it coming. Everybody said, well, it's going to be a simple, secular state. Nope. Well, that's the secret. That's the, that's, that's how Hashem always made it. He always brought the light, the Moshiach, through very weird ways with Tamar and Yehuda, with Lot and her, his daughter, through Ruth. And all that ways that you think doesn't make sense. And that's how Hashem tricks the Satan. So with that Hashem, we should be aware and see what's happening. And make sure we move quickly. Because time is running out. Amen.